As usual for OLED monitors, VRR flicker or VRR flickering is a thing to consider. So OLED monitors like this, they have slight changes for the lower end of the gamma curve, so for darker shades or medium to dark shades as well, as the refresh rate changes in a VRR environment. So in other words, as the frame rate of the content changes. Just at the moment, I've got VRR disabled. Just so I'm gonna give you a little bit of a flicker warning. If you're super sensitive to flickering, you will see flickering in the video. So you can now see flickering quite readily for the medium dark shades and the darker shades. To the eye, it's mainly for the dark shades where you can see it, although a little bit for the medium dark shades. The video also captures it, or the camera captures it a little bit more for some medium shades, which you don't really see it to, to the eye in the center of the screen, for example. That's really not something I readily observe. And if I adjust the exposure on the camera, you'll see it more readily for the dark shades as well. So that's probably a better representation of what your eye sees. But you'll see the refresh rate of the monitor listed just there. It's now going all over the place. Rapid fluctuations. Now when you're observing actual content, you're playing a game, you're not necessarily going to notice this flickering in the same way. In fact, you're very rarely going to notice it in this kind of way. You don't have a nice gradient, which makes it super obvious, and you also don't have this level of fluctuation in many scenes. But there can be some times when you will see fluctuations. Asus has added a feature called OLED Anti-Flicker. Got that off at the moment, and this is found on this model, the PG32 UCDP, and various other recent models of theirs, and this will be carried over, no doubt, to their newer models that are yet to be released. If you set this to middle, then to my eye on this test, it does reduce the flicker somewhat, but it is still there. Again, I'll adjust the exposure so you can see it a bit more clearly. But remember, the fluctuations here are very wild indeed. The high setting now for anti-flicker. You can still see the flickering. Although it does appear to be reduced somewhat. And more to the point, it's occurring less frequently, but when it does occur, it's still pretty obvious. So what exactly is this setting doing and how would it reduce flicker? Well, I've got the NVIDIA Pendulum demo open, which is a nice way of exploring what this setting does. So it's designed to minimise fluctuations in the refresh rate that the monitor is running at by minimising the range of operation for VRR. In the EDID of the monitor, you can see the following ranges reported. This won't be the same for every model, but for the PG32 UCDP, this is how it works. With it set to off, it's got a range of 48 to 240 hertz or 48 to 480 hertz if you're using frame rate boost. With the middle setting, it's got 80 to 240 hertz or 200 to 480 hertz with frame rate boost. With the high setting, it's 160 to 240 hertz or 250 hertz to 480 hertz with frame rate boost enabled. And LFC, low frame rate compensation, is used where possible with this feature, which will keep the monitor running at a multiple of the frame rate with its refresh rate to keep tearing and stuttering at bay. In the interest of time, I'm just going to focus on this monitor's normal native 4K UHD operation, not the frame rate boost setting. With this set to high, for example, a 160Hz floor operation is reported in the EDID, remember. I'm running the test at 200 frames a second at the moment, and the monitor sets itself to 200Hz. There's a bit of fluctuation because these frame rate limits aren't perfect, but it sets itself to around 200 hertz, as you'd expect, and I don't observe tearing or stuttering, so this is normal VRR operation. With the test running at 130 frames a second, the monitor sets itself to 240 hertz, and it deactivates VRR. You might not be able to see it in the video, but I can see clear stuttering, and it's clear to me that VRR isn't being used now. The issue is that LFC can't be used here because the monitor can't set itself to 260Hz at the native 4K UHD resolution, which would be doubling that 130 frames a second. If, however, I set the test to 100 frames a second, I can see the stuttering is removed and the monitor appears to be running at 200Hz. At 70 frames a second, it goes for a tripling, keeping the monitor at 210Hz and effectively removing any stuttering or tearing that you'd get with VRR deactivated. At lower frame rates, including those below the 48 frames a second floor of operation, LFC is also used. 
Note that the ranges for LFC versus normal operation aren't exact and they can differ slightly depending on the fluctuations occurring. So effectively what you've got with the high setting is up to 120 frames a second it's using LFC with the monitor using a relatively high multiplication factor for its refresh rate. At 121 to 159 frames a second, you've got a dead zone where no VRR is used, no LFC is used. And at 160 to 240 frames a second, you've got VRR used. The refresh rate of the monitor will therefore always be between 160 and 240 hertz. So this won't eliminate flickering entirely, as even fluctuations within the more restricted range can cause a degree of flickering. And you've got a dead zone where no VRR, LFC or otherwise is used, and you'll get tearing and stuttering but it is effective in eliminating the obvious and at times quite intense flickering that occurs on WOLED models where there are more extreme fluctuations in refresh rate. I won't bore you with any specific examples using the NVIDIA Pendulum demo, but the middle setting gives you these ranges. So up to 80 frames a second, it uses LFC. At 80 to 240 frames a second, it uses VRR. So there's no dead zone where VRR disables, but the refresh rate fluctuations are potentially more significant and they can be significant enough to give some VRR flickering, which sensitive users and I, subjectively speaking, can certainly notice rather readily. So I'm gonna show you some examples from Cyberpunk 2077, some in-game examples where VRR flickering can be quite noticeable. And you'll see my refresh rate is all over the place at the moment, and this is just a loading screen, and I'm noticing some flickering here as well. And you will typically notice it in loading screens, not always, but in some loading screens, because it does cause huge fluctuations in refresh rate on the monitor, these loading screens. And also in-game maps and menu systems can do this as well. So in this scene, the fluctuations aren't as major as they were in that VRR flickering test I was showing you before, but they're still significant, sort of jumping around quite a bit. And I can see VRR flickering for the post here, for example. And various other darker shades in the background. You'll be able to see this in the video in places as well. Unfortunately, it is difficult to capture this accurately in the video, but it's just to my eye, I do notice a bit of VRR flickering here. I've now set OLED anti-flicker to the middle setting. And with the middle setting, and actually in this particular scene, it doesn't really help with the VRR flickering. If anything, it makes it worse. I mean, you can the camera's picking it up pretty readily and actually it's exaggerated by the camera. But the reason for that is if you look at the refresh rate, it's going all over the place. That's because it's passing the LFC boundary now. So remember that's 80 frames a second, goes below that, LFC is used, goes above that, normal VRR is used. So it really is quite situational. But there would be other scenes where this setting works better and reduces the flicker. It really just depends on what fluctuations are occurring. Using the high setting now. That does stabilise the flicker. The monitor is using LFC pretty much all the time now with a high multiplication factor between the frame rate to its refresh rate. But again, depending on the fluctuations occurring, you might then enter a dead zone where it completely disables VRR. So in summary, the optimal setting to use, it really depends on your own sensitivity to flickering, to stuttering, if you're using the high setting for OLED anti-flicker, and the frame rate ranges that your game is running at. It's definitely not one size fits all for this setting, but I'd say that middle is probably going to be a sweet spot for most people as it reduces the VRR flickering a bit compared to off without creating the dead zone that high creates. Of course, there will be some instances where you're specifically crossing that LFC boundary at around 80 frames a second, like I showed you with this example, where it'll actually intensify the VRR flickering. But then for other scenes, it will reduce it because you're reducing the range of operation for VRR. So it's something you should really have a play with yourself and see what works for you.